It's amazing that death metal has been part of the heavy metal landscape now for more than 30 years, and one of the most important scenes that we've gotten from this subgenre was right here in America, the Florida death metal scene, which was really sort of a launch pad for this extreme style of music in the States. And it's given us names such as Morbid Angel or Deicide or Obituary, but the one that still maintains a relatively sterling reputation is the band simply known as Death, the group that formed and molded itself out of the previous project entitled Mortis. So this is one of those bands that I can't even do a Five Reasons video about if you are familiar with that series. I simply can't find five reasons why people dislike this band in those that I have found certainly have a little bit of explaining to do. So let's do something a little bit different. Let's take the seven albums of this band's wonderful discography, let's take the death records, and let's rank them all. And for the purposes of this video, we're not going to include the post-death project of Chuck Schuldenier's entitled Control Denied. Uh, we are going to just leave that be. However, it is one that would be probably around the middle of this list, if I'm being honest. So let's rank them all, ladies and gentlemen, and we start with number seven, which is spiritual healing. Now, there's one thing you'll notice about a lot of these videos is that I'm talking about bands where there's not a lot of wrong answers whenever it comes to starting points or just albums within their discography. Spiritual Healing uh, is an early album in Death's discography and really doesn't have any sort of tarnish to it. It's not one that is necessarily bad by any stretch of the imagination. But like other bands that we've discussed, this is simply the album that doesn't seem to carry as much weight or as much memory as some of the other classics that this band has delivered. That's sort of one of the problems that you can get with a discography that does not have many stinkers, is that those that are seen as absolutely excellent sort of overshadow those unsung heroes that are released in between. Spiritual Healing is such an album. It's one that certainly has its place within death metal history. However, whenever it comes to this discography, it falls a little bit toward the bottom. Number six is Leprosy. It's a similar situation with this album. These are two that were released right near the beginning of their discography, and it still has a lot of power and registry to it this day. You can definitely tell that there was a little bit more of a foundation of what death metal was all about, being established with this album, and giving the whole entire subgenre a lot more of an identity that was then coupled by other groups in order to really make it uh, what it is today essentially writing the rule book on the fly. Leprosy, though, is an album that still maintains a lot of power and a lot of that thrashy elements and sort of that punk background, that extreme background that certainly helped give death metal its start. Listen to its raw approach and you'll definitely understand why this was a genre of music that was attracting more and more people as more albums in this style were being released. Number five, we have Scream Bloody Gore, the triumphant debut of death and probably one of the best death metal records of all time in the eyes of many. This has a raw, visceral element to it that gives it absolutely almost no competition. This is one of those early tomes of death metal, so it had a lot more in common with some of the other genres of metal that were around during that time frame. Only it, it, it sped things up, it accelerated, it introduced this very gruff and, you know, just destructive style of singing. We heard screams and wails and cries. It's definitely one that was on par with some of the occult metal that you were hearing at the time as well. However, it was toned toward a different crowd. It was toned toward the macabre. And eventually, bands such as Cannibal Corpse would take this one step further. But Scream Bloody Gore certainly provided an excellent archetype for what was going to happen in the future with death metal. Number four is Human. This is where death really began to hit their stride and absolutely found some magic whenever it came to their songwriting. Chuck Schildenier and his revolving door of castmates were always a fantastic bunch whenever it came to musical intricacy. But this is one where that started to show itself a little bit more. That direct approach was slowly being stripped down a little bit further in order to allow for more complex patterns that we would get later in this band's career, which also... Uh, you know, like it or not, contains some of the band's hallmarks. However, Human was our first taste of some of these intricacies and further built on what this band's modus operandi was already starting to accomplish with their previous albums. Number three, we have individual thought patterns. If you thought Human was building off of that direct approach and becoming more complex, this is where that transformation was truly complete. This is where 
you could tell that this was going to be a very different style of death metal, even though this is one of the bands that were also considered death metal's founders. This is a monumental and sprawling album, one that easily still maintains some of those hallmark traits that death metal is all about, while also exploring what death metal potentially could have became and what it actually did end up becoming. Uh, Chuck was always a bit of a forward thinker whenever it came to that, and getting a great cast together for this album and those that preceded it certainly allowed for this album to breathe in a brand new light and certainly gave this album the certain ammunition that was required by up-and-coming bands to realize that there is a clean canvas in front of you. Death metal is not this paint-by-numbers style of genre. You can literally do anything with it and include anything with it, and certainly it will still retain itself. And that was something that they would really, with this right here, serve once again as a bit of a blueprint, but would only further develop and perhaps perfect with later albums. Number two, The Sound of Perseverance, the last album that we got from this project, and easily the most intricate. This is one that is still, to this day, considered to be an absolute hallmark of death metal, one of the best albums that this genre has to offer. And it's really hard to argue with that whenever you consider such tracks such as Spirit Crusher or the wonderful, wonderful uh, instrumental that is featured on this album, which shows that death metal doesn't always have to be this savage and surreal atmosphere. It's Instead, is one that could be very light-hearted, or at least in this case, one that could be very much introspective and very much uh, a window into an artist's soul. At this point, we really weren't too sure what was going to happen with the future of this band, or really, we weren't too sure what was going to happen in the future to our you know, our hero Chuck, but this was something where it was a great final moment for this band, and we never really wanted to believe that that was going to be it, there was going to be no more death after that. However, at least we have a very reflective style instrumental, such as Voice of the Soul, to remind us of Chuck, and maybe even bring a tear to our eye. When's the last time that's happened during a death metal album? Yeah, I'll wait. Number one, though, is Symbolic. If the Sound of Perseverance took that intricacy to the breaking point, then Symbolic was the one that really got that balance at its absolute most perfect. Whenever you consider songs such as Crystal Mountain or A Thousand Eyes or, you know, really the title track by itself. The title track by itself, that opening riff. Da 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 This is like Beavis and Butthead, I know, but still. Just work with me here. That opening riff is absolutely landmark. It is one of those riffs that you cannot get out of your head once you have heard it. It's something where three, four, five months down the line, you'll be walking through a store, you hate being there, but all of a sudden, there's your head channeling it up. Da 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 And you immediately think back to the record. This is the death record that has easily one of the biggest uh, really staying memory or staying powers to it, considering just the way in which it's constructed. Each song feels like an individual uh, an achievement, either that or an individual um, a journey that you have to take. And the composition and even just the landmark uh, the ability for the, these guys to just really give and deliver a great performance. This is a great cast. Everything about this album just popped. This was Death Metal's finest hour, and really... For some, it still may remain to be Death Metal's finest hour. There have, of course, been so many different bands that have come forward and have taken Death Metal and transformed its mold, made it something different, made it something bigger. There's been progressive death, there's been technical death. Now you have a Death Metal for every flavor or every day of the week. But back then, whenever there was still very few elements to Death Metal, very few ideas with Death Metal, this was the album that you saw as the future. This was the album that you saw that was taking death metal places that it had never gone before, even if some other bands had started to attempt it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, or the Rank'em All of Death. What's your list? What is it from one to seven? Leave that in the comments box below. And if you don't have any death records, if you are not yet a fan of this band, Go to the Amazon page as you see in the description box below and buy one of these records immediately. This is not, uh, this is mandatory. This is not optional. You definitely need this band in your life if you're a metal fan. At least scope them out, at the very least. And if you think there's another band that you would like to see their albums ranked from worst to best, 
leave that in the comments below as well. I'm Cover Killer Nation, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.